Well, we begin in Niger, where the army has declared allegiance to the leaders of a coup there. The chief of staff says he doesn't want to see conflict within the armed forces. President Mohamed Bazoum was detained by soldiers of his own presidential guard on Wednesday. Ahmed Idris reports now from Abuja in neighboring Nigeria. Initially, Niger's security and defense forces pledged to crush the mutiny. The detention and removal of President Mohamed Bazoum by the guards appointed to protect him. Hours later, an about turn, one that complicates and possibly ends any hope of reinstating the deposed leader. The chief of staff of the armed forces declared support for the coup cool leaders, saying he did not want to cause division. It was this announcement on Wednesday that ended Niger's first peaceful transition between civilian governments. We, the security defense forces gathered at the National Council for the Safeguard of the Nation, have decided to put an end to the regime you are familiar with. This follows the continuous deterioration of the security situation, the bad social and economic management. We reaffirm our support to all commitments undertaken by Niger. It also returned soldiers to the corridors of power, an emerging trend in West Africa with implications not only for the region, but for the continent. Amid the uncertainty, a few hundred supporters of President Mohamed Bazoum marched towards the presidential palace in a show of defiance. Warning shots from troops loyal to the army sent them fleeing for safety. Mediation from former President Mohamed Yusufu failed to sway the soldiers or secure the release of Bazoum and his family. The United Nations, African Union, Regional Bloc ECOWAS and the United States have all demanded Bazoum's reinstatement. I spoke with President Bazoum uh, earlier this morning and made clear that the United States resolutely supports him as the democratically elected president of Niger. We call for his immediate release. We condemn any effort to seize power by force. Frustrations around unrest and uprisings in the Sahel have been a driving force behind coups in several West African countries. Niger's neighbors, Mali and Burkina Faso, have seen four military takeovers since 2020. Western nations, particularly France and the United States, have since increasingly relied on Niger as a base of operations against armed groups in the Sahel. They'll hope to see Niger remain a democracy, as will Mohamed Bazoum's supporters who voted him into power just two years ago. Ahmed Idris, Al Jazeera. Well, Ahmed joins us now from Abuja in neighboring Nigeria. Ahmed, as you were just saying there in your report, plenty of uncertainty. This has been a very fluid situation for hours. Uh, parts of the government at points denying a coup had even taking place, saying Bazoum is still president. What are you now hearing? Basically, uh, things are really, really fluid. Uh, in the past few hours, there were demonstrations on the streets of the capital, Niamey, by pro-coup supporters, and that degenerated into uh, uh, some attacks and arson, as we are meant to understand. And the demonstrators, in fact, attacked the headquarters of the governing party, the PNDS Tareya, in the capital, Niamey, and looted property from that building. It took the intervention of security forces to disperse the crowd. And that's what we fear. Um, a lot of people fear uh, will, Niger will turn into. Uh, remember, the governing part. I'm sorry, we've just lost a connection there to our correspondent, Ahmed Idris. We'll try to, to get him back for you here. But in the meantime, let's speak to our correspondent, Charles Stratford, who's following things also for us from Dhaka in Senegal. Charles, you've been watching the regional reaction there, broadly condemnation. Yeah, widespread condem condemnation. I mean, the initial lines coming out from ECOWAS, that's the regional body, that looks after, is supposed to look after security across the region. They strong, strongly condemning what's happened in Niger, and they're saying that anybody found responsible for harming the president and his family, and indeed the people of Niger, will be called to account. It's a similar kind of line from the AU, the African Union as well, condemning this in the strongest possible terms. We do know that the president of Benin, um, was sent to Niger yesterday in a bid to try and negotiate um, some, some way out of this crisis. Very little information coming out from there. Seemingly, those negotiations, though, failed. 
Um, I think it's also important to recognise that um, certainly a lot of people in this region now are asking how has this happened again. Let's not forget that this is just the latest in a series of coups that have fallen across West Africa in the last couple of years, two in Burkina Faso, two in Mali, mm -hmm. both countries now being run by basically military authorities. And so, as you can imagine, a lot of Africans are asking, well, what kind of state this means for democratic evolution, the democratic process across West Africa. Some very, yeah, a very worrying time across this region. And as you can imagine, we expect more reaction in the hours mm. and days ahead. And not just in the region, but beyond. Niger has become so central to the West's attempts at containing militancy, militancy across the Sahel. This will have an impact on that, surely? Yeah, huge concerns about security across the region. There has been a, a fight now for a number of years in a number of countries fighting what are often described as terror, terror groups, um, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram. Um, we know that there have been millions of people affected by this, civilians. There are around about 6.2 million uh, refugees that have suffered as a result of this crisis. And we know that Niger is, has been pivotal in that fight. And it was often described as like a last bastion after we saw the withdrawal of uh, the forced withdrawal of UN peacekeepers in Mali, mm. subsequent to the military coup there. Similar scenario with French troops also. We know that the French and the US have military bases in Niger. So, yeah. This coup has huge implications uh, for security across the region and potentially even abroad as well, um, because there's no sign that there was any kind of um, winning push being made by any of the people fighting these terror organisations and, of course, the impact on millions of people across the region now being called into question. Uh, the situation potentially could deteriorate um, and get even worse. Charles Stratford there across that situation for us from Dakar. Thank you, Charles. Well, we've managed to get Ahmed Idris, our correspondent, back on the phone from Abuja in Nigeria. Uh, Ahmed, we were talking about the protesters you were seeing, well, that you were hearing about on the streets. We were watching videos of, of burning tyres, burning cars. We've also heard defiant words from Bazoom. Are you concerned that things could escalate? And these are, the, uh, these are the concerns of many people, both within and outside of Niger, that when supporters of the Bazoum government go onto the streets and they meet these opposition supporters or demonstrators, things could escalate. And apart from that, it could also degenerate into a situation or the, the, the military is not completely cohesive as, as, as now, as simply because there are still divisions, there are still troops loyal to Bazoum and his government. And with words of defiance from members of the former government or the deposed government, then probably we, the state may be set for some kind of conflict within the military itself. And that could degenerate into a situation whereby there could be total breakdown of law and order from the side of the security forces and then the general public. Already cases of uh, inter-ethnic rivalries have been ripe during the campaign season, even after the uh, post-election uh, results were after the after the election of, uh, of the presidential elections were announced. There were attacks and uh, violence uh, that followed the announcement of Mohamed Bazoum as uh, as uh, president-elect of Niger then. And this is a cause of worry for countries like Nigeria that is also struggling with its own uh, security challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, total breakdown of law and order in Niger could mean that the fight against uh, armed groups in the region could definitely take a north dive and that this, this will give uh, these attackers or gunmen the upper hand in attacking communities and destabilizing the region entirely. Yes, Ahmed Idris there with the latest for us from Abuja in neighbouring Nigeria. Thank you so much, Ahmed. We'll be staying across that for you and all the latest developments here on Al Jazeera. Well, earlier I spoke to Baba Weldhormer. He's Al Jazeera's correspondent from West Africa. He told me there's little to be surprised about when it comes to that coup in Niger. We know that a president was det de detained early uh, uh, morning yesterday and there are Hours passed, and probably there was such, let's say, dialogue between the presidential guard and the rest of the military 
battalions, uh, especially outside of the capital, Niamey, and the, the military succeeded to, to, to avoid this bloodshed, to avoid this confrontation, mm -hmm. as the military declared a few hours ago that they are backing the move taken by the presidential guard so that so they can uh, put uh, uh, the, so that they can avoid any military confrontation between the different uh, battalions uh, of the uh, Niger army. Uh, well, we know that the, that the presidential guard initially said this was about economic mismanagement because of insurgency in the Sahel that was also being mismanaged. Uh, we know that Niger is obviously in a bit of a, a tough neighbourhood, right? And, and militancy has been increasing across the region. So this could have some very broad implications for a lot of vested interests. Yes, uh, but Niger, Niger's situation, its current situation is not different from what it has been... Uh... Over the last, let's say, 10 years, militancy has been ravaging the region in, in Niger as well as in Mali, in Burkina Faso, and large areas of, uh, and regions of these countries are out of control of the capital uh, authority. Uh, and also for economic uh, uh, situation and life conditions, they have never been quite good in Niger. Mm -hmm. Over all its history, since its, its uh, independence in 1960, uh, it's one of the poorest country. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's uh, living, it's going through a, a very difficult time over the last uh, two years. But there's nothing, let's say, special about uh, uh, the reign of uh, uh, Mohammed Bazoum, it's not that dif different from who the country has lived through a lot of the reign of uh, Mohammed Yusuf uh, over the last 10 years. So it's, it's always like that in coup d'etat in mm -hmm. West Africa. It's always about uh, economic um, uh, worsening conditions, difficult uh, security situation. It's something that comes together with a coup d'etat in that region.